Hey everybody, welcome out to the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee, and today I'm taking a look at Don't Skip Leg Day. This is a card drafting game from Pandasaurus Games. Comes in an actual usable shaker bottle here. And uh, it's about uh, not skipping leg day at the gym, because if you skip leg day, you're not exercising the whole body. And this game cares about the holistic approach to exercise. Let me show you how this one plays, and then I'll give you my thoughts. In Don't Skip Leg Day, you're going to be drafting cards. There's a deck of cards here. Every player will be dealt nine of them, and they represent different exercises and such. So you will take a look at your hand and choose one of them, and then pass the remaining eight cards along to the player on your left. Everyone does this simultaneously, so you will receive a new hand of eight cards, and then choose one of these cards to draft. So how do the cards score? Well, let me show you. There are cards that are simply worth one, two, or three points when you take them. There are cards that are going to be worth, have one, two, or three of a symbol on them, that as you collect these, if you have the most, you score points, or if you have the second most, you score points. There's cards where if you collect two of them, you will score five points. If you collect three of them, you will score 10 points. And then there are other ones here that as you collect more of the set, you'll score more points. You might notice, that these are actually cards from a completely different game. Well, that is because these are the same type of scoring conditions. You have cards that are worth one, two, or three points outright. You collect protein shakers. Whoever has the most protein shakers gets 10 points. Whoever has second most gets five. If you have two of this card, you score five points. Three of this card, you score 10 points. And then if you collect multiple of this type of symbol, then you will get increasing number of points. One, three, six, 10, or 15. So there is one difference here, and that is the, uh, the leg day and the selfie cards here. The leg days honestly behave a lot like the dumplings, uh, the pudding from Sushi Go. Uh, but this one here, this one says you score one point for each different colored background card you have. And then here is leg day cards, the name of the game. The point of this being, you should not skip leg day. So at the end of the game, whoever has the fewest leg day cards is eliminated from the game completely. Everyone else will score up all of their points. If, if for every set of two of these, they'll score five points. For every set of three of these, they'll have 10 points. You're gonna draft over two hands, or two times a, a, a week, basically. So what'll happen is each day you'll draft a card and reveal it, and then the second day, you will draft a card and keep it face down. Then the third card you take, you'll reveal it, fourth one face down, and you do this until you have seven cards in front of you. You re-deal out nine new cards to everyone, and then you start drafting again. But this time you do face down, then face up, down, up. And so what'll happen here is that at the end of two weeks at the gym, is the way that they explain it, you're going to score up points. First, if you grabbed a leg day card, this is going to be worth negative one point for every face up leg day, but not the face down ones. So hopefully you grabbed face down ones, you turn this sideways to indicate that you are going to lose one point from it. Then everyone will reveal all the cards that they took, score for their sets, score all the different points, and whoever has the fewest leg days is going to get eliminated. Most points is the winner of Don't Skip Leg Day. My thoughts on this game are a bit complicated because, as I alluded to in the overview, those are cards from the game Sushi Go, a game that has been around for 10 years now and has a pick and pass, the card drafting formula down very well, very well known. It's sold over 2 million copies across the world. I have a hard time believing that this is truly independent design. This seems so surprising to me that it uses the same foundation of almost all of the cards. There's 108 cards in Don't Skip Leg Day. There's 108 cards in Sushi Go. It's uncanny. It's so strange to me. I don't really know how to review this in the context that I love Sushi Go. I give the basic original game of Sushi Go like an 8. And this one I'm going to give a much lower score because most of this game already exists. The differences I talked about at the end there where you draft cards face up and face down alternatingly, and I don't like that change to the drafting formula because it means that you're operating off of less information, which I don't love that feeling. You also are in discouraged from drafting leg day cards face up because they'll cost you a point, and 
it's I get the I get the shtick, I get the joke. I often like games that have a clever sense of player elimination right at the end. High society, if you've spent the most money. QE, if you've spent the most money. Haben gut, or uh, the good and the rich. If you have donated the least to charity, then you're eliminated at the end of the game. And I feel like those games do it in a clever way with a lot of tension and push and pull. And this one does it in a way that I, I get it. I don't love it in there. I much prefer the way that, I mean, I'm not strictly trying to compare this to Sushi Go, but the little dessert cards have the most, have the fewest. Positive or negative six points is a pretty big deal. So just straight up eliminating people. I don't love what what's really in here. And then that tension of trying to collect three of a kind. Well, it's a lot easier when you draft uh, 14 cards and they're all going to be together uh, in that set in totality. So. What are my thoughts on this? I don't think you need to get it. I'm actually kind of discouraging you from get it, from getting it. So I don't think it's a terrible game, but I don't honestly actually love that much uh, of, of it that's not already completely existent in the game Sushi Go. So as a reviewer, how do you how do you talk about that? How do you put a number to this? I'm giving this one a five out of ten. I don't think it's a horrible game. I think if you wind up with this, you actually have mostly a pretty decent game in there. But I cannot ignore the fact that a game that's been around for 10 years is pretty much most of the ingredients in this bottle already. And you just kind of put a different label on it, the gym thing. Let me speak a few things nice about it. I like the, the, the artwork is kind of funny that all of the exercise uh, pictures, the drawings and stuff, all the legs are super skinny except for the leg day cards. I think that's neat. I uh, like, I don't even like the, the bottle that it comes in. I hate, I hate boxes that are unusual. But hey, a gimmick, right? Leaning into a theme, all that stuff, I can appreciate. But score-wise, ultimately, I'm kind of discouraging you, i.e. I'm giving this one a 5 out of 10. Not an awful game by any means, but one I don't think that you need to get. One I would sooner recommend something else uh, very, very much easily. So don't skip leg day. That's it. That's a 5 out of 10 for me. Thanks for coming by this review on the Dice Tower. My name is Chris Yee, and, uh, you know, go hit the gym. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching another video from the Dice Tower. Hey, you want to learn more about us? Communicate with us. We have a Facebook group. We have a Discord channel. Lots of different ways to get involved with the Dice Tower. You can find that in our Linktree link below. So just click that. It will take you, and you can communicate with us on Facebook. Join our Facebook groups. There's lots of cool things that you can find and become part of the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Bassett.